Guys, welcome to a doozy of a show. This is TFL Talking Trucks. I'm Andre, and I'm joined by Nathan. Thanks, Nathan, for being here. And today we're talking about all everything about towing. Oh yeah. Specifically, the Ike Gauntlet, the test we do at TFL Truck, World Stuff is Towing Test, where we go, we basically go to the highest elevation possible on the United States interstate highway system. Right. Ike Gauntlet, Eisenhower Tunnel and we test trucks to the maximum. So what are we, what were we actually talking about today? We're talking about a couple things today. Mainly, one of my favorite topics, the Ram TRX versus the Ford F-150 hybrid with the Ike Gauntlet, but more importantly, Andre. Yes. What have we been testing this year? Let's talk about some of the highlights too. Thank you for joining TFL Talking Trucks podcast. If you love pickup trucks, or big full-size SUVs. If you love trailering, towing, and going off-road, this is the right place to be. Together, we can make this podcast the most popular ever. This is like a top 10. This is year in review. This is, well, actually, this is like a third of what we've done. So if mm -hmm. we talk about the top 10 highlights, the runs that we've done on the iGauntlet for towing, We've done way more, and you can all see that on either tfltruck.com, the website, or the TFL Truck channel. That's correct. And we've been doing this for a while now. The Ike Gauntlet was established many years ago. What, six years ago now? Yeah, approximately. So uh, I remember back in the day when Mr. Truck and Roman got together in 2013. Uh, uh -huh. This was almost you know seven years ago now. And they, they used the Ram 3500 Dually to tow a giant horse trailer up and down. Yes, I remember that. Yes, but that was, we're not talking about that right now. <laughs> no, past uh, um, f uh, things that we've done on the uh, Ike Gauntlet, we'll, we'll cover that some other time because yeah. there's some really interesting ones, including one time where we brought a half track and brought it, it's, that, that's a highlight because that hurt a lot of people. Physically. Yes, <laughs> including, uh, including you. Including me, but um, and, and it's, it's, it's kind of making me shake a little bit. But here's the good news. What we're going to do is we're going to cover uh, 10 highlights. Uh, some of these trucks you guys might not be prepared for because there's some interesting ones here, including the Tahoe diesel. And Andre is going to give me detailed information about that, even though there's an embargo. Uh, no, I'm not. He but will. but uh, Ram TRX is a huge truck. It's winning a lot of awards, right? 2021 supercharged V8. We're going to talk about, we're going we're gonna to start with the TRX. Okay. But then we're going to also hit every class, right? Heavy duty, duallys, diesels, ha mid-sizers, half tons, SUVs. Yes. And uh, just so some of you guys may not know what the Ike Gauntlet is. So really quickly, let's give you just the basics on what it is. It is a test where we take a vehicle, truck, and we tow with it and often we max it out or come close to getting to its maximum towing uh, capability. That's taking into account payload and there's actually a truck on this list that uh, had maximum payload and it really did you know cause a problem. <laughs> anyway the point is is that we go up and over the Eisenhower Tunnel, actually the Johnson Tunnel as well. Yeah. And we're doing brake application tests, so we're actually counting how many times we hit the brakes on the way down. Some vehicles are really good about grade shifting on their own, some are not. And then we're talking about MPG going up the hill, we're talking about time going up the hill, mm -hmm. and we're talking about the way the vehicle performs going up and down the hill. All of those things really matter, and remember, we're going from around, what, 8,500 feet to oh, around 11,000 feet. And it's a very steep grade, one of the most difficult grades in the United States on a major highway. Yeah, 7% grade, 8 mm -hmm. mile run. So uh, elevation and, and that grade really put the trucks to the test. So let's dive in, the TRX. So the TRX is really an off-road specialty truck, right? It's got oh, a yeah. giant supercharged engine, 702 horsepower. It has amazing suspension. We have another video actually coming up soon on TFL Truck uh, where you and I go out um, to an off-road park and we test the TRX against the Can-Am Maverick X3 Turbo RR. Which is surprisingly close in a lot of ways. Those two vehicles are ridiculous. Yes, but I use that to my advantage actually for this towing test because I put that Maverick X3 on a trailer and we towed it with the Ram. Uh, so the total trailer weight for the Ram was 5,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound like a lot, but, but it's only rated at about 8,100 pounds as it is, the TRX. Right. But here was, here was one th other thing we were trying to show. 
uh, that the TRX it's so specialized for off-roading, it doesn't have a lot of payload. Right. So 966 pounds of total payload this truck had. We had a motorcycle in the bed with a trailer and me. We're maxed out on payload. So that kind of gives you guys an indication of what this thing can do for the person who actually does go out and goes off-roading and likes to bring their toys with them. That's as much as you can tow reasonably. Yeah, so if I bought a TRX, and actually TFL truck is buying a long-term truck, yeah. I, I, would order without, I would order one without some of the fancy, fancy options because the truck we uh, actually tested was a TR2 package, which means it's the most like one of the most luxurious TRXs you can buy, with suede leather and giant panoramic sunroof and a few other options. Didn't like have a, a, the as in bed uh, spare tire. Too. Yeah, it had a second spare tire mounted inside the bed. Right. All of that adds weight. Oh yeah. Right. So so uh, our truck won't have a lot of those things. It'll be a little bit more basic. Still 80 grand, the one we ordered. <laughs> yeah, but it'll give a better payload. Yeah, it'll give you a better payload so you can bring a, a small family and a trailer with you if, you if you really wanted to. Right. Yeah, so, dude, it surprised me on the way down. Really? So, this giant 6.2 liter V8, right? Mm -hmm. Tow haul mode. It has a tow haul mode, actually. So, it's actually meant for towing uh, because it also has a trailer brake controller built in. Right. So, all those things are available. It's still a Ram truck. Uh, guess how many times I hit my brake on the way down? Eight. No. Go lower. Oh, lower. Uh, six? Lower. You're kidding. Five? One. No! I hit my brake once. No, 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 just so you guys know, what we don't do, unless it's a Super Ike, is we do not shift through the gears and drop it into a lower gear. We want to test the systems that are available on the trucks themselves. Mm -hmm. So, grade braking, Usually in diesels, they tend to do something like that, like one. I'm really yeah. surprised. Yeah. So I have two excellent explanations for this. Okay. Well, first of all, this is a massive truck. The truck itself, the one we tested, weighs about 6,800 pounds. <laughs> and the trailer was about 5,000 pounds. So actually, the truck to trailer ratio, the truck was the beefier part of it, right? Right. Usually when we tow, it's like the truck weighs about 5,500 pounds and we're towing 10,000. Right. So the trailer actually doubles the weight of the truck. But it wasn't the case here. Um, transmission did downshifted for me automatically. I wasn't controlling it manually, like you said. Um, and then the large displacement of the engine, I think, was able to slow me down. It was wonderful. It was, it was, it was the easiest downhill I think I've ever, I've ever done. That is really super. I did not expect that. Um, I, I was thinking much higher because your average truck. We go between, what, say six and nine brake applications on the way down. Sometimes uh, ten. Yeah. Sometimes ten. Sometimes ten. But I mean, yeah. I, I'd say in terms of an average, it's right around that zone. So this is really surprising, especially for a gas truck. Yeah, and also, uh, why did we count the applications of the brake applications? It's because, you know, we want to see how controllable it is on the way down. You don't right. want to overheat your brakes. The more times you touch the brake, the, w the worse it is, really. That is correct, because you can go through brake freight. Now, here's the thing. We do have a very stringent um, top speed going downhill. We try to maintain with 60. 60, which is the speed limit. Right. So what we do is we, we go up to 60, and once we start passing 60, we apply the brake and drop it down to about 50, letting the vehicle catch up with, to itself. Now, in some cases, what it'll do is it'll downshift and it'll hold the shift and whatnot. Some trucks will do that. Other trucks will just go wild and like, yeah, I don't care, you know, keep on going. And it, it'll fly to 80 if, if you want it to. Um, so in this case, this is really strange because for me, with such an overpower, 710 horsepower, right? Or 707? 702. 702. Yeah. So many different sevens out there with the Hellcats. The point is, is that I am really surprised about how heavy that is, how powerful it is, how it did downhill. Now here's the question, how did it do going uphill? So on the way up, we usually uh, start on the merge lane, right, at 35 mm -hmm. miles an hour, and then we really floor it because we want to get maximum speed up the mountain. Right, right, right. right. Good so momentum. I did that. It was normal, right? Mm -hmm. I did that. I got to 60 before I could say, like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so it was one of the fastest accelerating trucks with the load. Uh, it was fully maxed out on payload and 5,000 pounds of trailer. Um, did really well. So eight minutes is the perfect run because it's eight miles at 60 miles an hour, right? Mm -hmm. This truck did it in seven minutes and 54 seconds. So it's basically a perfect run. I use cruise control. Usually we don't. 
uh, but this truck was so calm, so easy because it had so much power that I just clicked cruise control and basically it was like an afternoon drive. Right, and the reason we don't use cruise controls, usually they'll disengage, uh, especially under load. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of them will cut off and that'll kill our times because then you gotta accelerate and catch up to itself and you lose momentum. But it sounds like with this truck, it didn't care. Yeah, and 4.7 MPG was the trip meter. Uh, so that's, Whoa. yeah, that's a pretty good high result. Uh, you got to remember, there are no gas stations on top of this mountain, right? No. So we couldn't pull off and actually measure it at the pump, right? We, we, we cannot do it on this test. Right. So 4.7 is a good number. It's on the higher end of things. Yeah. But I think it was due to the fact that we weren't towing super heavy, right? Well, that, and it just didn't stress the vehicle right. at all. Yeah, that's it. Because normally, I mean, it, it, it gets bad gas mileage when it's like not even running. Yeah, so guys, TRX, you know, will not tow very, very heavy, but when it does tow, it does so very confidently and very safely. And it was, it was a, Really a pleasure to drive. Oh, and, and by the way, if you're wondering about the Raptor, which we have tested in the past, you guys can find several Raptor tests in the past. Yeah. I think it tows about 100 pounds more than the Raptor. Yeah, the TRX is just, just edging it out. <laughs> it's, yeah, on paper, right, so, it's, it's better. So, dude, what... Uh, so, the F-150 Hybrid will come at the end, right? Yes. We're going to cover the F-150 Hybrid. It is at the end. Andre loves that truck. I can tell you that. He's... he's <laughs> yeah, he, he, yeah. I even put a so tweet out there on that. What are we talking so about? So the next one, uh, this is actually a versus, uh, the Ford F-350 versus the GMC 3500, and both of them were towing 30,000 pounds. Yeah, so this was actually a part of our 2020 and 2021 um, heavy-duty truck testing, right? Right, for Gold it, Hitch Award. It was this year. Mm -hmm. It was this year. It's, this year feels like a very long year. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys agree with us. Here's the good news for us, at least. We've been able to still do our Ike gauntlets regardless of all the restrictions that are going on out there. Uh, Andre's been super careful with Mr. Truck on that and on top of that we've had tons and tons of results. A lot of them are surprising. Yeah, so this was te a, a test, a very popular actually video because we were close to the maximums on these big dualies. Right. Mr. Truck has a CDL so he was the pr appropriate driver for this test. Yeah, it's uh, a 2,700 pounds or 27,000 pounds or more, right? Or is it 26? Yeah, the rules are very complicated. Um, 26 combined, but also, you know, um, different states do it differently. If your trailer GVW, the gross vehicle weight rating of your trailer is over 10,000, uh -huh. sometimes they'll actually question you about your CDL. Right. So there are different laws across the country. Um, I'm actually still studying. Um, I'm, in January, I'm hoping to get my CDL because so so I, there's a really good school in Phoenix, um, Southwest Truck Driving School, right? And they actually uh, were willing to work with me because I want to do a little video with them mm -hmm. about the process of getting a CDL, and also they will test me. Well, so, there you go. So hopefully in January, if travel is still allowed, <laughs> I, I can do it. We'll, we'll see. Uh, they, yeah, things could change. But um, so let's talk about the results of the F-350 versus the GMC uh, 3500. Yeah, and this actually touches on the latest news, right? Because uh -huh. all the heavy-duty manufacturers for diesels are fighting against each other, right? Oh, yeah. So recently, uh, GM stepped up their ratings to 36,000 pounds. Just this week, Ram announced a huge uh, increase in their towing capabilities. Um, Ram is going to 37,100 pounds. Jeez. So, on <laughs> their dualies. Yeah, which is uh, We're talking nuts. about one-ton trucks. Yeah. One-ton trucks. One-ton trucks that are able to tow that much is just insane. So, so uh, we'll be doing more, hopefully, testing of the dualies in the following year, right. in 2021. But... These bad boys, we want to put them to the test. And I got to tell you, so GM has kept their Duramax 6.6 liter V8 mostly unchanged mm -hmm. for the last several years. It makes 445 horsepower, 910 pound-feet of torque. Ford came out with their new Power Stroke V8 diesel. Um, until this week, it was the most powerful. <laughs> until this week. <laughs> yes. Until uh, Ram said, ah, we're going right. to make a change. So um, the, the Ford engine, a 475 horsepower is their V8 diesel. They're approaching 500 horsepower from the factory, almost. And 1,050 pound-feet of torque. And i got to say, on the mountain, um, well, let's show the results, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So let's talk about the results really, really quickly. And then kind of some of the impressions. Um, on the mountain, let me 
if you're watching this on YouTube, we have uh, visuals. Um, if you're just listening to us, we're going to read them. Uh, yeah, we're going to just have fun with it uh, <laughs> together. So um, the GMC 3500 on the way down with 30,000 pounds had nine brake applications. It did the uphill in 11 minutes and 47 seconds at 2.4 mpg. Okay. Uh, well, this is mpg just climbing full flat out, climbing for eight miles. So right before we, we hit the mountain, we reset the gauge inside the vehicle, which will give us, you know, at least the vehicle's take on what mpg it's getting. And yeah, the vehicle probably those... freaking out, right? Yeah, it's, it's just like, holy cow, you know. But it's enough of a distance to where we can get a pretty good idea of how efficient or inefficient the vehicle is going uphill. Yeah, and all these uh, dualies, the new diesels, have uh, exhaust, exhaust brakes, right. which very help, help them on the way down. But the Ford had a better performance on the downhill, five brake applications versus nine. Much better. So, you know, that's hard for me to explain, you know, mm -hmm. what played into that. But the new turbocharger that they're using on the Ford engine, you know, they have variable vanes and they can control that. They can it's use like a that. BMW technology. Yeah, they can use that to... Um, as an engine brake, right? right, to kind of add pressure, a back pressure on the engine. So Ford had a better performance on the way down, and it was quicker on the way up by a big margin, 10 yep. minutes and 20 seconds on the way up. That is significantly faster. Versus 11 minutes and 47 seconds. And it looks like it also got 2.4 miles per identical gallon. Identical So fuel identical efficiency. fuel efficiency, but the Ford had, it definitely looked like it was superior. Now, I've driven both trucks regularly without a trailer on them. And I got to say that the GMC was a little easier for me to drive because it felt a little bit lower. The hood was a little, low, you know, little, little things like that. Sorry, visibility. Yeah, visibility. Yeah. But the Ford just outpowers it in, in just nine different ways. It just feels like a much more powerful vehicle, even driving without a trailer. Yeah, and I would agree with you. Um, and of course, um, the Chevy still has that independent front suspension, which Ford and Ram are still solid axles. Right, right, right. And it makes a major difference with some people in terms of comfort and perhaps with some handling. Uh, I didn't notice a big difference with handling, except for the fact that the Ford sat a lot higher. Yeah, but these all these trucks are getting better. Oh, you yeah. Know, every year they keep improving the suspension systems or braking systems, all, the, all those things. Um, Finally, this week, Ram came out and said, okay, Ford, you have 10,050 pound-feet of torque in your engine. How about 1,075 pound-feet of torque in our new Cummins? Um, so, and you would probably say, well, how did they do it? How did but, they do it? By the way, they kept, Ram kept their 400 horsepower rating. So they didn't change the horsepower. They, they changed just changed the, the torque. torque. So how do you get more torque? So they said they improved, well, they increased the fuel flow. Okay. So they were able to recalibrate the engine so it can pull more fuel <laughs> to supply the extra power. Okay. Um, and also they, um, they tweaked uh, the turbocharger, I believe. So, okay. So just the way how much pressure it, can, it is able to generate. So they, they now have the torquiest engine. Fantastic. Good for so, them. And so, that'll last a week or two until yes. somebody else says, yeah, all right, I, I got 10 more than you. Um, and it's, it's not going to stop anytime soon. They're gonna, no, the, the, and, the torque battle's going to last forever. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say, you know, when, when is it going to end, right, mm. on, on the towing numbers. But, you know, being in these trucks with Mr. Truck and being on the mountain, and this is a tough test, right? Oh, yeah. Really steep. I, I got to say, I felt, even as a passenger, I felt comf comfortable. Yeah. You know, you do have 30,000 pounds behind you, but the trucks, you know, the trailer sway wasn't there. Obviously, they have really great exhaust brakes, really comfortable interiors, right? These trucks are getting very, very good. Yeah, and they're intelligent, too, because they can actually control some of the trailer sway by utilizing braking and whatnot in some of these trucks. They have camera systems to help you back up and also for towing assistance. Mm -hmm. They do so many more things that make it a lot more efficient and also a lot safer to drive. And yeah, I agree with you. I feel much more confident as a passenger even sitting in these vehicles. Mm -hmm. And that goes for all of the automakers that are building trucks for towing. They're all improving across the board, which is great because when you have somebody like Ram making a truck that produces more torque and can tow a little bit more, it forces everybody else to up their game as well, which forces research, which means better vehicles for us. Yep. And Speaking of that. Should we move on to the next one? Yes, because yeah. this is something that uh, I was really curious about. Um, uh, I have family members who buy these all the time, like every two years. The brand new Suburban. 
the gas, yes. suburban, I should say. We can talk about that one. We can talk about uh, driving impressions and all that. Uh, it was towing, I believe, 7,000 pounds on the Ike. Yep. It's and our horse trailer that we use. Yep. Mm -hmm. It was the horse trailer. Now, did that max it out? No, it came close though. Um, so we gotta just introduce this really quick. Yes, please. The 2021 full-size SUVs from GM are all new. All new. So independent rear suspension, yeah. which is completely new. Uh, new platform, new body, new interior. The only thing that's not new, I believe, at least with the gas engines, well, are the gas engines, right? R right, right, right. So. Um, they increased the like the uh, wheelbase a little bit. They uh -huh. extended the wheelbase, although the overall size is about the same as it right. was before. But the interior space, like you were saying, was helped by the new suspension system. Right. Uh, they're much more comfortable. Uh, much, Beautiful interiors. Yeah, and they kept the engines. So, so why test them? Well, because it's a new engine. The engine is not new, but but everything else is. Right, right. So, so the underpinnings are, you know, a lot of the components are new. And that independent rear suspension, that is something that right when we heard about it, we were like, oh, we got to tow with that. We got to yeah, see what it's like. Yeah, because people usually say, oh, you don't have a solid axle back there? It will not tow. Right. right. Some people will say that. Right. Well, so, we put it to the test. Exactly. So how did it do? So it, it did really... Uh, I was I was surprised once again. So first of all, the ride is really comfortable. This particular suburban was a high country, so once again, we often get from the manufacturers on loan these very highly optioned. Vehicles. We do ask for base models and for lower end models, but usually they don't want to give them to us because their point of view is if we get this really luxurious one, we're going to gush over the fact that it's super luxurious. Sometimes that even happens. Yeah, and, but so so we test what we get. <laughs> Yeah. Usually. Um, on the way down, um, so this truck, this Suburban, has the 10 speed automatic. Right. Which they also introduced in some of their half ton trucks as now, well. Now, this was jointly developed with Ford, by the way, but they have very different algorithms. They run differently. They, they have a lot of different components, too. But the initial research behind them was done with Ford, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. So, on the downhill, uh, first of all, the ride was very comfortable. It had air suspension. It helped to level out the vehicle when we added the trailer weight. Yeah, because it was sag otherwise. Uh, otherwise, the suspension will you know squat quite a bit further. The air suspension was wonderful. The downhill performance uh, wasn't super super great. Um, uh, we have a video about it. Um, I don't remember exactly how many brake applications we did. Okay. But so so you guys would have to check out the video itself. But I do I do remember um, how it did on the way up. Yeah, uh, and, and it looks like the numbers I have in front of me look pretty good. Yeah, so, so what, 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 what numbers I've do you have? I've got seven minutes and 58 seconds getting up that hill. That's really good. Benchmark time. Yeah, Once that's again, a eight minute. Is eight minute kind of is the benchmark. benchmark. Yeah. And so that's within an error, of mar uh, margin of error, error of margin. <laughs> I'm yeah. tired today. Um, and also, it got 3.8 miles per gallon for a full size SUV towing 7,000 pounds. That's not bad. Yeah, so it, once again, really comfortable suspension, mm -hmm. was very um, actually solid on the road, even with 7,000 So it didn't wander or anything? No. Because I thought that with that independent sus rear suspension, there might be a chance of it wandering a little bit or, you know what I mean, the, the, maybe the dog, uh, the tail wagging the dog, stuff like that, but it didn't happen? Yeah, it didn't happen in this case, and I think it was also a testament that we loaded the trailer, you know, fairly well, about 10% tongue weight right. of the total weight, so about 700 pounds on the actual hitch. 7,000 pound trailer. Uh, we also use the Gen Y hitch, like mm -hmm. we always do. Uh, and we had those uh, weight distribution attachments. So all of that together, uh, plus all the technology that the Suburban now offers, of course, um, no trailer sway, I was pretty amazed. It had an integrated uh, brake controller, didn't it? Yep, okay. and GM is very good about this. You okay. know, when, when they have towing packages, they usually include um, the brake controller. They do on the midsize trucks, I know that. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I was also a pleasant surprise. Um, yeah. It can tow up to about 8,200 8, pounds, depending on configuration. And of course, we, we weren't pushing it very near the limit on towing, but near the limit on payload once again. That is really cool, but I gotta say, and this is, we're gonna branch off just for one second while I, I yap. Um, recently, Roman uh, put out a video, I believe on TFL Truck, about towing with a Dodge Durango. Mm -hmm. That thing can tow up to 8,700 pounds. 
Yeah, actually, one of the top in the class. Yeah. I, think, I think the only SUV that can tow more right now is the special towing package on the Ford Expedition. Right. Right. But, and but the Durango is up there. It's way up there. Yeah. And, and this is not with the big uh, SRT package either. This is actually with their tow and go package that's just been introduced. So anyway, there's a video out there on TFL Truck that I highly recommend you guys watch. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to take that vehicle up the Ike yet, but we will the minute we get one. Right. Yeah, and th yes. And actually, we are getting it this month in December. Well, there you go. So and that'll be a January video for you guys. Yeah, totally. And that'll be part of our 2021 kind of gold hitch com comparison competition because because the SUVs are being updated. Mm -hmm. uh, there is also in December, and I, th I can say that now, the new updated 2021 Armada is coming out, too. Yeah. So the Armada is going to be there. The Durango is going to be there. Once again, the GM SUVs. And if we can ever get another expedition, we will test that also. Oh, I'm sure we'll get one eventually. Okay, so we, uh, earlier we, I did mention uh, mid-sized vehicles. So let's quickly talk about, uh, once again, going a little bit off the reservation here, we're going to talk about the diesel Jeep Gladiator because we didn't do an Ike with it, uh, but we did do a tow loop with it. Now, here's one of the things we also do. We like to do an MPG loop where we have a specific loop that we always use. We try to keep the parameters roughly within the same thing. So, you know, we try to keep it at a certain temperature. We try to, you know, there's only so much you can do with Mother Nature, but it's a real world test. And what we do is we do, it's just under a hundred mile loop and it's on fairly flat terrain. And we go back and forth to the same gas station and we do a double test in terms of MPG. We look at what the vehicle says and we also look at what the pump says. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're able to ascertain roughly what we're able to do with these loops. And we've been doing these loops now for about five years, I think. Yeah, and, and using the same loop. Right, and Excellent. the same gas station, the same everything. Yeah. And um, it, it's, it's I, I like this loop. It's not the most enjoyable thing to run. The Ike <laughs> is a little scary. This is kind of boring. We've actually fallen asleep a few times doing this. Um, but we did it with the diesel Jeep Gladiator. And the reason why is because the Gladiator is a much more efficient vehicle than your regular Pentastar V6. So how did the Gladiator do? on that run yeah dude this is this was actually a really crazy test because um, it, uh, it was a comparison also but not really a comparison but we also had the f-150 hybrid on this loop yeah super efficient uh, truck yeah so the funny thing about so the Jeep Gladiator is introducing the new diesel for the Gladiator right which right. is a three liter that also is in the Ram 1500 truck they also have a Wrangler diesel mm -hmm. right and in the Gladiator well, it's really about efficiency and range, right? That, that's really what you're getting out of this engine, R and right. more torque. Right, uh, of course, more torque for low-speed uh, off-roading, uh, but, but mostly um, efficiency, right? It, and it's not cheap either. No. It's about the $4,000 option just yeah. for the engine. Just for the engine, yeah. and, and you can't get the manual with it, so you have to opt for the uh, $2,000 Eight-speed automatic So it's really too. like a $6,000 option. Which is a lot of dough. Yeah. Yeah. So we wanted to put it to the test. And EPA rates this truck at around 21 city and 27 highway MPG. 27 highway MPG is a really good number. For something that has the same you know, aerodynamic characteristics of Kim Jong-un, <laughs> it's impressive. That is a very, very efficient truck that's basically a brick. Yes, um, and of course I wore my uh, traditional Russian hat. Um, <laughs> well, of course you did. So I wasn't aerodynamic either. There's a handsome man right there. Look at that. No, uh, no, no. But, but here's the thing about the Gladiator. I want, I want to get this out of the way. It's not the best towing vehicle amongst the Gladiators. If you want the maximum tow package, which is what, 7,600 pounds? 7,650, yes. 7,650, <clears throat> you can get that without the diesel. You have to get it with the gas engine, with the eight-speed automatic <coughs> transmission, with the tow package. That's the only way you can make that maximum. Otherwise, the penalty for having a much heavier diesel means, what, 6,500 uh, pounds? Yes, so 6,500 pounds if you get the diesel in a, like a sport configuration, which mm -hmm. is kind of an entry-level right. trim. And then this was a Rubicon. So it had the heavy suspension and everything else. Yeah, and this was 6,000 rating. So that's a little bit counterintuitive, right? Because when you're looking at diesel heavy-duty trucks, uh -huh. they tow more than the gas-powered ones. Right. right, and so you would think that that's what this would do as well. Yeah, but it, it's like it's working in reverse, uh, but part of it is payload. Um, because you're adding this heavier diesel engine in. Much, the, much heavier diesel uh, engine. You're adding, you're adding a DF tank, right, mm -hmm. and all that uh, after all, treatment. All the, all the tubes and everything else, all that stuff weighs a lot. 
Yeah, so in the end, this Gladiator fully loaded, this was $66,000 Gladiator. Yeah. Uh, we had the, only about 900 pound payload. So really it's like, if you want to max this truck out, it's one guy, one gal driving, and then you can tow approximately six, you know, 6,000 pounds. So uh, the bottom line here is that I, I wanted to mention the fact that it's not the best towing out of all the Jeep Gladiators out there. Better towing one is actually the one with the gas engine. Yes, but here's, the, here's what I learned on this loop. Uh -huh. Even though the Gladiator diesel doesn't tow capacity-wise quite as much, like you said, mm -hmm. it was an easier drive, and here's why. It never really revved high. Oh, yeah. um, so because of that extra torque, 442 pound-feet of torque this engine produces. Yeah. Uh, usually there's a gentle hill on this loop. This is as flat as Colorado gets. Yeah. But there's a gentle hill and usually, and especially, uh, I remember this specifically, the gas-powered V6 Gladiator, the one that Tommy and you know, that uh, Roman uh, purchased for the company right. last year, that one is screams, like at 5,000 RPM. It's, it's at, yelling at, at, yeah. at the limit. It, it's just going up there on this gentle, uh, maintaining 70 miles an hour in this loop. This was at like 2,500 RPM. Just kind of lopping so, along. So yeah, so the diesel engine made me more relaxed, really. I, I wasn't towing quite as much, but I was more relaxed in general because I, you know, I felt like you know, the engine wasn't revving, it was quieter. Uh, it was actually not much sway at all. No, so. I, I want to point out something, by the way. Uh, we try to average a speed, I believe maximum speed on that road, uh, that highway is 75? Yes. And, and, and we maintain 70. Yeah, and the reason for that is because, and we give a lot of uh, grief for this. Yeah, well. Because, you know, f folks from uh, beautiful California tell us that they cannot tow at uh, those speeds because of the regulations in California. There are different regulations here in Colorado. But you know, everybody else can tow at higher speeds. Um, so we want to have a reasonable speed. Right. Because you want to go cross country sometimes and you can't go 55. I can't drive 50. <laughs> I knew you were going to. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Sammy Hagar would be thrilled. Now, here's the thing about that. So what we're doing is this is sort of a compromise. And we've been doing this for a while now on this loop. So rather than go to 75 C in Colorado, you are allowed to tow up to the posted speed limit. Mm -hmm. However, once again, in California and some other states, you are not permitted to go to that full speed. You have a certain set speed. So by going 70 miles per hour and locking that in for every truck we test, it makes it a little bit more accessible for those people in California, which is closer to their speed limit, and then at the same time, it's giving us a benchmark to follow for everything else that we're doing. Yes, so here was the result towing, right? Mm -hmm. So 6,000 pound trailer, this was a horse trailer, so it's a box, once again. So right, it's not very full. aerodynamic. No, it's once again, the Jeep is not very aerodynamic, the box trailer is not very aerodynamic. 11.5 MPG is what the Jeep returned. That's really good. Yeah, it's one of the highest Whoa. numbers. Uh, one of the highest numbers we registered. The only high, the only better MPG that you and I got um, in the past was one towing with a Canyon GMC Canyon diesel. The diesel, yeah. And also, you and I tested an F one hundred and fifty diesel. Yeah. Um, and towing wise, uh, that was right when that new diesel came out. Mm -hmm. Right. That was around twelve. 12-ish, okay. 12 something. So 11 and a half towing, that's a really great result. That's a very good number. So if you don't have to tow a ton, literally, if you don't have to tow too much, I should say, um, the Jeep actually is pretty compelling. Now I've towed with it before with the V6, the, the regular V6, and it was decent. I felt that it was a little narrow and sometimes it wandered and I couldn't stand the mirrors. The mirrors are the one thing that if you guys are serious about towing with the Gladiator, you really should get some clip-ons or something like that because they're just too small. And the mirrors, of course, are for off-roading. Yeah, they really, right? they're, they're built for off-roading so yeah. they're, you know, they're, they're moving. Yeah, and I don't know, Jeep, I, I think they heard us talk about this many, many times. Yeah, I'm sure they did. If I don't know if they'll ever offer a towing mirror from the factory. That's uh, something that I have a feeling that a Mopar thing might come out in the future if enough people complain about oh, it. Oh, yeah, by the way, there's a Mopar brake controller now, too. Yes, yeah. yes, which initially we thought they were going to do right when they introduced the vehicle, and they, they didn't for some reason. Now they have it, and it's kind of cool looking. It's like a little knob with a button in the middle. It's, it's not your typical brake controller. Yeah, so let's switch gears again. Yes, let's move what's, on to... What's next? Speaking of something that used to be diesel, uh -huh. but it isn't anymore, the Nissan Titan XD with the brand new 9-speed automatic transmission and 
I believe, uh, some other new goodies too, right? Yeah, so uh, for tw this was a 2021 model, actually. So uh, it was updated, redesigned in 2020. Um, and then um, now 2021, very minor changes, mm -hmm. right, for, for this new Titan XD, but still a very capable towing platform. Yeah, we towed 9,100 pounds with it. Yeah, so we had our flat deck trailer, the Iron Bull. Uh -huh. That's our other regular trailer that we use. We put our old project Gunsmoke, the, F, the Ford F-350. Which weighs as much as an aircraft carrier. Uh, yes, um, so total weight of this trailer was about 9,100 pounds, give and take. And uh, this truck is now gone, by the way, the Ford F-350 project. Yeah, we, that went to charity. We sold it and donated uh, over $13,000 to charity, to a local uh, children's home. That's right, and uh, I gotta tell you, uh, in my entire history at TFL, which has been over almost 11 years now, that might be one of the most satisfying things that we've done. I, I'm thrilled about it, and we're going to be doing more of that in the future. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and really quickly before we move on to the Titan, um, we have a new site, tflbids.com. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. our, our so, new truck site, basically. Yeah, it's an auction site. So w what we wanted to do is actually have a community of truck people and SUV people, um, which all of us are, and actually have a community where people can buy and sell uh, vehicles that are pretty cool. They're um, pretty so, cool, and the prices are not ridiculous because some of the other auction sites out there are. So. Yeah, so so we're just getting going. You mm -hmm. know, of course, starting a new business is hard, right? <laughs> so so it's not flying off the shelves quite yet. But we but still sold some vehicles, and we will be doing more charity projects on this. Mm -hmm. And the latest one, if you actually go to TFL Classics, we have a new project truck, which is a Toyota Tacoma. Yes. Yes, that's yeah. going to be interesting because that, that, I, I love Toyota Tacomas and that, it's the same generation as the one I used to own. Ugh, I miss that truck. Okay, let's move on uh, to the Nissan Titan XD. We just talked about the fact that it towed 9,100 pounds on the Ike Gauntlet. Let's talk about how it did. Yeah, so the XD, if, if you're not familiar with the new Titan, right? There's a regular Titan. Mm -hmm. The XD has a way beefier frame. They actually, if you put two of them side by side, you will see that the XD will be a little bit taller. Mm -hmm. And part of that is actually the frame thickness is much more beefy. And they only offer the XD now in this kind of a long wheelbase configuration, right. which is a very stable tr towing platform. The engine is still the same, 5.6-liter uh, V8, which they've had. It's but still now, one of my favorite gas engines. And it sounds pretty. Yeah, it almost. just sounds. It's, it's a great sounding it's engine. It's an epic, epic sounding engine. And they updated it with premium fuel that can make up to 400 horsepower now. Right. Uh, how, what's the torque on it? Uh, 413. 413 pounds. Once, pound once feet again, of with premium fuel. Okay, so here's the thing about that, uh, that truck. They used to have the uh, Cummins V8 diesel available for the truck, didn't sell very well. Wasn't exactly what I'd consider an outstanding performer because some people were comparing them to three-quarter ton trucks. And this sits between a half ton truck and a three-quarter, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's really unfortunate for Nissan because it absolutely shot them in the foot to make this in-between truck. Uh, personally speaking, just my own opinion, I think they should have called it a half ton truck and this would have been just the half ton XD. And that way its performance numbers would actually outdo a lot of the competitors, but they didn't do that and that's it's just too late. But the XD does have the beefier frame. It is just a thicker vehicle which has a higher tow rating and a higher payload rating than the half ton version of the Titan. Uh, even though they had the same engine transmission and I believe the same axles, right? Well, the, the axles are, are similar, yes. So it's not, it does, the XD does not have a heavy duty axle. No, it doesn't. Um, and, the, um, and the hubs are still six bolt. Mm -hmm. But when I was talking to the Nissan engineers and, and their marketing folks, um, the actual brakes are a little bit larger. Oh, okay. So there are some differences. You know, well, it's, it's a not, heavier truck, that makes yeah. sense. So it's not like identical uh, underneath. So, right. so they have uh, several components that, that differ. Um, so how, it, the numbers are pretty cool. Tell me how it did on the hill. So, once again, and I've talked about this, the XD is a solid towing truck. Yes. It's long, it's heavy, it's, it's got a beefy frame. Uh, it was true uh, this time as well with this new one, the 2021. We really wanted to, t to test the transmission, right? The transmission became... Which is a new a transmission. Seven, yeah. seven speed, now it's a nine. It's a, it's a new transmission they introduced. It's still with in-house, developed in-house with right. Nissan. So... Uh, yeah, on the downhill, it performed a little bit better. It wasn't a huge like leap 
it wasn't like a leap forward because uh, it's still this is a gas powered truck it does not have a, a exhaust brake right. right so but on the way up uh, it, it did improve. It felt like it had more oomph, especially with uh, the new tuning on this engine mm -hmm. for premium fuel. Um, so when you need maximum towing in this Nissan, add some premium fuel to it, and it automatically adjusts you know, to the octane. It levels. understands that it has a higher octane and it is going to give you more power. So the time I have here is 8 minutes and 27 seconds. That's not too bad under a heavy load, especially towing over 9,000 pounds. Um, our benchmark is 8 minutes. So that is pretty close, um, and I've got a 3 uh, MPG, exactly 3 MPG rating. Once again, not terrible. Yes, and so it didn't quite meet that eight minute, like perfect time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but so I think what was happening really is, you know, it was trying, it, it accelerated well. It, in the mid, mid mountain, the mid, mid route on the way up, it was just, it was just a little bit too heavy, you know, was it was it fishing for gears too? Was it um, bouncing no, around? No, it, it did a little bit better. So nine speed is an improvement. I think. Yeah, because the seven speed, I, I got to be honest with you, wasn't. It, it's okay, but it definitely hunts for gears all the time. Ro, uh, Andre and I both have towed with it quite a bit. We had a long term one. Yeah, and it wasn't. That was like the weakest part of the vehicle was the transmission, and it wasn't terrible. It was just okay. Yeah. this is supposed to be a better transmission. Yeah, and I was happy. Uh, once again, it wasn't like a leap. It wasn't like a giant leap forward, but they also, because they have the new transmission, they had the different like rear differential ratios. Uh -huh. So they're trying to match, get a better match overall, right? So the whole truck kind of works better together. So it was an improvement. It wasn't a perfect time. It wasn't a perfect eight minute run with well, the slow. Mr. Truck said he thought it towed really well and it, it actually inspired him to um, talk well of the truck to the point to where he actually considered at one point buying a Titan. Uh, which I remember is, that. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. Which, which is saying something considering, you know, Mr. Truck. Um, now, let's talk about Nissan Titan's uh, direct competitor, which is next on this list, and yes. that would be the Toyota Tundra, which is now the oldest of the oldest vehicles out there in terms of overall platform, uh, transmission, engine, everything that's on it is ancient by comparison. Yeah, but it's still an oldie but goodie. Right? Yeah, I. Oh. It, yeah. I love I so, love Mia Tundra, especially with the TRD exhaust. So recently, over the last couple of months, we've had a few owners email us, and mm. uh, there was this um, thing going around. And our friend Tim Estradal from the um, Pickup Truck SUV Talk channel yeah. uh, also talked about this. But there was the fact that in 2020, uh, Toyota actually um, discontinued the transmission cooler on this truck. So before. 2019 and, and several years before, prior, they had a small um, auxiliary transmission cooler, um, and then the engineering team, I uh, guess, determined that the truck was, you know, so beefy that they really didn't need one. Right. Right. But a lot of people were concerned. They said, "Can I still tow? How does it work? Why?" You know, there was a lot of questions. So, and you actually went and talked to a Toyota engineers about this, am I correct? Yes. And then on top of that, you did an Ike gauntlet with this thing well loaded to see how it did with its temperature and you compared it to another truck doing that. Yeah, so we have a long-term truck, actually, which we're about to sell, the Trail Boss, the Chevy Silverado. I'm gonna miss that truck, it's a really good truck. Yeah, it's been solid, we've really beat it to heck. And yeah, that 5.3 just... did so much better than I, expo I expected. Well, I am sorry, let's continue with the uh, Yeah, Tundra. so we compared the Tundra against the Trail Boss just as a control, right, as a, as a kind of a, uh, differentiator and compared same trailer about 8,000 pounds we towed an AI gauntlet and we actually got a separate gauge just to monitor the transmission right mm -hmm. on the Tundra. Yeah, that was a lot of work. Uh, yeah so that was it took a while to uh, configure and set up but anyways uh, we did so the Tundra we did see uh, on, on the way down and on the way up uh, higher temperatures in the transmission fluid, according to the gauge. Right. right. But the computer never gave us the Toyota itself. The Toyota never gave us any warnings. It never pulled power. It always had full 5.7 liters of V8 that it has. Um, and you know the overall experience was very, very positive. So this is a six-speed automatic transmission, which. Yes predates a lot of uh, ancient history. Um, and I believe, it, actually the, the numbers are pretty good for its climb too. So uh, I've got here 
3.4 MPG. Mm -hmm. that's, that's actually really good. Um, it's better than the Titan did. Yeah, it's, it's right? better than the Titan. It's also had a faster time up the hill than the Titan. Remember, it's towing 1,000 pounds less. Yeah, it's a little bit less. You know, so, so let's be fair. So it has 8 minutes, 13 seconds going up the hill. Once again, really close to our benchmark. The purpose of this wasn't just to put it through the Ike. It was also to test how that transmission performed without the cooler. And basically, you'll have to watch the video, but Andre has does have an opinion about it and also did some research on this so you guys if you're interested in the tundra and you're curious about its towing capability without the cooler this is a great place to get that information yeah totally um uh, downhill performance on the tundra was similar to the new 10 speed than mm. the chevy mm -hmm. so the people often say you know the six speed is archaic why use it blah 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 well it performed in a very similar fashion to a much newer transmission design. Right, and Toyota has always been, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Hell, they had a four-speed automatic transmission in their small cars just up until a couple of years ago. Yes. And, you know, this is something that was established back in the 70s. And, of course, they are working hard. We know this on the next Tundra, right? Yes. There are a lot of prototypes running around. There's a lot of excitement. There are a few leak, leaked images out there. Yeah, we're hearing lots of things about um, hybrids, about twin turbocharged V6s, yeah. a whole bunch of stuff. So, guys, the current Tundra is still very solid, as you saw. Yes, the transmission was a little bit hotter, but uh, there's much more to look forward to. Yeah, and, I mean, look, the numbers speak for themselves in terms of reliability. Tundras are known for being super reliable. I know a lot of people who own them and they swear by them for good reason. So it's something that, um, you know, definitely think about if you're, if you're out there looking for a half ton. Uh, but let's talk about something that's a little bit different. It's not exactly a half ton. It's a tuned beast. Yes. So switching gears, we're almost to the F-150 hybrid, right? Right. We have the Tahoe diesel you're going to tell me all about, oh, too. Oh, no, no, no. I'm yes, not, you're going to tell I'm me not telling you anything about before the embargo. So moving on to the tuned Godzilla 7.3 liter V8 badass truck that we just got rid of um, on, just, on TFL bid, right? Yeah, tflbids.com. Yeah, that, that, this is one of the first trucks we sold. Um, we did a few things with it. For one thing, we wanted to see how it drove with a tune and without a tune. And we towed 9,100 pounds with it, so the same as the Nissan Titan XD. And it also had a 1,500-pound camper in the bed. So it was under some stress, and uh, especially with uh, Andre um, and uh, Mr. Truck uh, manning the controls. Um, so let's talk about how that truck did. Yeah, dude. So this was our long-term project, right? Um, as you know. No pavement needed. It was a series where we tested this truck. This truck, so this particular I gauntlet, I was looking forward to because it kind of uh, showed what a modified truck can do. We test a lot of stock trucks, right? We do indeed. But yeah. you guys modify trucks all the time. In fact, it's one of the biggest markets out there next to Jeep is aftermarket truck components. Yeah, so this truck has a three, approximately three inch suspension lift, mm -hmm. Harley suspension. It has 37s. Uh, yeah. tires, all terrains, right? Now it has a camper, given, uh, granted, it's a, it's a camper with a pop top, right? So it's, a, it's an in-bed truck camper from four-wheel campers, but it's a little bit lower, so it's not a huge drag, right? But it does uh, cause a little bit of drag. It does, and it, it weight, 1,500 pounds, like you said. You actually did a video on that, too. Yeah, we have several videos on the camper just by itself. Oh, tons. <clears throat> and and then and then we hooked up 9,100 pounds to it. So this truck was maxed out on payload, mm -hmm. even with the updated suspension, which is really beefy, really strong. Uh, and we're go taking it on the world stuff as towing test. Um, and we're doing it twice because we're using the five star tune, uh, which is so. Here's the thing: uh, the guys at five star. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked for them over the last couple of years. Yeah, they're, they're great to work with. We've, we've had a partnership with them for a while. Yeah, we, we have. But, but they're very, I've never met more power hungry guys before. <laughs> I mean, these guys know power. Yeah, and they, they, uh, they want to find a way to get that power. Yeah, always. So they tune you know, Ford EcoBoost engines, you know, obviously Ford V8 engines. They tune other manufacturer vehicles. But this was not like... Let's, this is not the maximum tune power. This was a modest increase, about 35 to 40 horsepower gain over stock. Right. Um, and it was very purposeful because it was also meant for off-roading, right? This truck is an off-road truck, so we didn't want to really max it out on power, 
because we want you know long term you know reliability, longevity, durability. Don't want to fry the engine by going crazy. Well, when you're in the middle of Moab with nobody around you, you don't want to be broken down. Yes, anyway. I agree. So, so they do all these things. They have the special tunes specifically for this purpose. They call it also off-road tunes. Mm -hmm. So they modify some of the transmission mappings. Uh, once again, a little bit more power because this truck was set up to run 87 octane, mm -hmm. which is actually for us in Colorado mid-grade. Yeah. Uh, 87 octane across the country at sea level is usually the beginning the low grade, grade. The yeah. low grade. Yeah, we have 85 as our low grade. So 87 octane is not very expensive. No. You know, it's very reasonable. Uh, so, you know, the, the differences between the stock run, because we did two runs here, right, and the tune runs were not hugely dramatic on the way up, mm -hmm. but on the downhill it did a lot better. Well, I have on the way up uh, the, an average of 3.4 mpg, which isn't bad, by the way, for a heavy-duty truck this like that. This was maxed out, yes. Yeah, and uh, a time of 8 minutes 13, no, I'm sorry. Let me try that again because I just read to you the Toyota one. <laughs> Let's do that again. Three miles per gallon. Okay, still okay. It's still okay, and but a much better uphill time of eight minutes four seconds, which is really impressive. Once again, considering how heavy the load was. Uh, oh, sorry. And, uh, <laughs> there, there he goes. He wants to hear what he was actually saying. <laughs> so, guys, uh, I get a lot of we get a lot of questions like this. I have I, I want to buy a heavy duty truck, mm -hmm. right? I don't. I don't want to spend ten thousand dollars upgrading to a diesel. Right. Right. Uh, what do I do? Um, so in this case, um, I would say this engine, the seven point three liter V eight, the Godzilla engine in the Ford, is good for most towing applications. Right. I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about towing every day. I mean, if you're hauling cross country, the diesel is probably for you. But if you're towing occasionally and maybe less than 14,000 pounds, somewhere you know, in that neighborhood. The, even with a 355 rear end, this 10-speed automatic heavy-duty transmission in this Ford, you can see almost the perfect time. Eight yep. minutes and four seconds. That was, is what I would call benchmark. I mean, the yeah. four seconds is really, I mean, yeah. this, that's the matter of like letting off the gas for like one second. Or sneezing right? halfway or up sneezing. the hill. Yeah, so that's, that's really a perfect time. Uh, and overall, this engine is about eight thousand dollars cheaper than the diesel that they offer. Right, right. So, so in general, the very successful test. The time up the mountain. I think we were limited by the speed limit of the highway. Yeah, we weren't limited by the capability of the. No, truck. it was. And and the thing is, is that um, I mean, you'll have to watch the video to really get the details. But one thing that they both walked away with is that with the tune, it was tugging at the leash. It was really, uh, it woke it up a little bit more. Yeah. So you get that extra feel. But in terms of numbers, they were very, very close. And also, um, with what, what this shows is that tugging at the leash part mm -hmm. is actually not just for fun. It's a safety item, right? So let's imagine... You're climbing up this mountain. There's a very slow semi, and right? you gotta accelerate to get and, around and him. You gotta accelerate to go around him because it's just you don't want to slow down right. because it's not safe. So that gives you that capability, right? So which is great. Speaking of capability, should we transfer to the F-150 hybrid? No, because you're gonna tell me about the Tahoe diesel. You can tell me a little bit about it. I know you don't want to, but you can tell me some stuff. We're under embargo. We're not allowed to talk about driving impressions and certain numbers and stuff like that. But damn it, you can tell me a little bit about it. Okay, uh, okay. So give me, a, okay, what is a Tahoe diesel? What is it? Uh, uh, it's very exciting. It's the first in, in about, what, two or three decades mm -hmm. that there's a diesel engine in, inside of a big full-size SUV from right. GM. So that's already goodness, right? And it means a much more efficient vehicle that has really good torque. Am I correct? Yes. So three liter straight six turbocharged diesel, which is also available in the Silverado and the Sierra. And we've tested engines. extensively. Yes, yeah, same power, 277 is the horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque is the torque, 10-speed automatic, 323 rear end, so kind of you get it in one way, one, one configuration for that diesel. Two-wheel drive or four by four, mm -hmm. you have a choice. EPA ratings are out. Yes. So 27 mpg on the highway. It's like the Jeep. <laughs> That's basically. I mean, just just think about that. 27. I think the the, the range per tank is something like five or six hundred miles potentially. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so the tank and I, actually that specification I haven't been able to find. 
It, well, it depends on your driving. Because, yeah. because uh, usually for the short wheelbase Tahoes um, is about 24 gallons for normal gas, uh -huh. but they also have to put the DF tank. So right. I think the actual diesel tank is a might, tiny might be bit even smaller, smaller. Yeah. because there needs to be space for the DEF uh, fluid uh, to reside on the, under there. But still, if you're talking about 27 mpg highway and 20 gallons, like you said, that's like 500 miles. And, and it's just, that's, that's crazy. And I've been saying this for years. Now, a long time ago, General Motors did offer diesels with the Suburban. A long time ago. But those diesels were big and stinky and <laughs> they smoky. They were big and stinky and not, and not very efficient and all that. This is a completely different way of looking at it. This is a setup that is really good for highway driving and for light towing, right? I mean, you know, in terms of the numbers that are on paper. Yeah, I can't tell you how it tows. But you can say how much it can tow. Yes, so uh, the towing rating is about 8,000 pounds mm -hmm. on the Tahoe and the Suburban. These are the diesel models. That engine is also going to be available in the GMC Yukons. Right. The new ones. And also the Cadillac. Can you imagine a Cadillac diesel SUV? Well, they've, they've had Cadillac diesels before I, I know, in but sedans. Is, but again, SUV, yeah, it's a whole different, different thing. Yeah, it's uh, different. So, December 11th, guys, come back to TFL Truck. Uh, we're under embargo because other journalists may not have been able to drive one yet. Uh, they're basically doing because of COVID, but they're basically sending the Tahoe around the country and every kind of journalist is driving. Right. So to be fair, and this is how the embargoes work, we have to make sure that everybody has equal access and equal amount of time to produce material so they can get it out to you guys. So now, hopefully, everybody's pretty much had their chance. And now as of December 11th, which is not far from now, Boom, we're going to have driving impressions for you and that Ike. Um, okay, so you can't tell me much more about that. No, but, but we've covered how it. How much did you tow up the hill? You can tell me that. Yeah, 7,000. Yeah, okay. so we, once again, uh, maxed out by payload, uh, not maxed out on trailer. Okay, and this is the new Tahoe. So this actually has the independent rear suspension. So once again, yep. curious to hear about that because it's a different type of power to weight ratio. Can't tell uh, you. No. Uh, or anything else. Well, you nope. can say whether or not you, did you have a good day? Uh, the weather was okay. Okay, that's yeah. all he can the tell weather, me. Weather, all right, I, I, I tried, guys. He's not going to give me, he's not going to give anything away. Let's talk about one of the vehicles that I know for a fact Andre has been extremely enthusiastic about. And not just Andre, Tommy loves this thing too, absolutely adores it. And that is the F-150 Hybrid, the 2021 all new F-150 Hybrid. This is a completely new vehicle for Ford. Yeah, and well, I guess I'm excited about every truck because, well, first of all, they're new and a lot of new technologies have come out. So I'm Crazy kind of, amount of technology. I'm kind of truck. a sucker for all this stuff. So uh, the F-150 Hybrid is, they call it a full hybrid. Roman calls it a mild hybrid, but technically what the full hybrid means is that there's a limited range, a limited ability to drive on electricity alone. Right. So a uh, truck like the Ram E-Torque, right? If you look at the Ram 1500 E-Torque, we had the Rebel. Yes, right? I remember that. For about a year, we had a long-term truck uh, from Ram uh, that we purchased. Uh, that truck is not able to drive on electricity alone. The engine is always running, basically, mm -hmm. when you're driving. This Ford can but a very limited amount. <laughs> so Right. Well, the e-torque is basically a mild boost off of an electric motor to help you kind of get up and going. That's really its whole purpose. Yeah. It doesn't do anything else and honestly it doesn't do much. Yeah. This F-150 hybrid is a different system. Completely. It's not uh, based, it's not, the electric motor is not under the hood. It's actually sandwiched between the engine and the transmission. So it sits lower in this transmission housing. Right. Right. Uh, down below. Uh, the electric motor is approximately what 35 kilowatts, which is about 45 horsepower, -ish, roughly. Yep. Yeah. Right. So it's not a massive motor, right? It's not a massive electric motor. Right. But it provides, like, if you if you're going around like a Walmart parking lot and you're crawling, you can do it silently, basically. Yeah, I was crawling. I was silent around our parking lot here, even. Yeah, but it has that like space age like little noise. <laughs> is that good? Do you like that? That was, I think that was the backup sound. Wasn't oh, it? is that the backup sound? And then it's like, it's like when you go forward, it's like a little Jetson like electric noise. Oh, that whooshy sounding. Like, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it has that. Mm -hmm. So when you're at slow speeds or you're going downhill or if you're not it using It actually power, has an EV that works to a certain degree. Yeah. So it has a small battery, 1.5 kilowatt uh, hour, 
1.5 kilowatt hour. So once again, not a huge battery. So we put it on the Ike and that video hasn't published yet. So mm -hmm. this is a preview and we usually don't do that. No, we don't normally do previews. We like it. Well, it helps when you actually watch the video because you know, it helps us. Yeah. But in this case, we can give you a couple basic tidbits about the vehicle. How about we talk about how it handled? Yeah, so first of all, they've updated the suspension a bit. So mm -hmm. these new F-150s have a higher gross vehicle weight rating. Uh, these vehicles are heavier. This mm -hmm. hybrid limited truck, which by the way was 79,000 bucks. But that, uh, that is the top of the line. Right? I That's, mean, it's like the maxed out super truck. You can't really put much more options on this one other than the tunnel cover. I right. Think. Okay. So this was top dog, new Ford, every option. And uh, weighed 6,000 6, pounds just by itself. Okay. <laughs> so, so that's already a pretty heavy truck. About 1,350 pounds of payload. Mm. Reasonable, not yeah. gigantic. Uh, no, but it's reasonable. Yeah. I, I would say considering how much For it weighs. For luxury truck, yeah. Right, it's really and good. the wheels and everything else. All of that has to be taken into account. Yeah. So I, I wasn't going to go light on this one. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to tow like 7,000 pounds and, and walk away from it. So we loaded the trailer to 9,200 pounds. 9,200 yes. pounds. Even though the capability of this Ford is above that, so you have to be careful once again. When you have a fully loaded truck, the payload, um, I mean, the towing number is about 11,000. Mm -hmm. If you have a fewer options, it goes up to like 12,100. And if you have a two wheel drive, it's like 12,700 pounds. Right, but we're talking about a limited, which has all the goodies in it and 22 inch wheels. Yes, so that, that's approximately 11,000 pound max tow. Okay. And Ford actually, Ford, maybe you can fix this. Um, they don't make it easy to find out what that number is. <laughs> you know, in GM trucks, they now started printing those numbers. Right, right, right. On it the makes truck. it a lot easier. In Ram, you can type in your VIN and it will actually uh, show you online exactly what your towing ratings are. Right. In Ford, you have to go to their towing guides. This is as far as I understand. And you have to go in their spreadsheet and look up your truck, but that doesn't give you your VIN number. It just tells you like your configuration can do this. Right. I, I think for maybe you can put it in the screen. Considering you know, how customizable these trucks can be with all the options, you should have something where you can easily access. Or maybe in the in the center screen. Yeah, just so, some so basic what, tech what information. What can I tow? Oh, 11,000, fine. You yeah, know, something like that. Something like that. Um, so anyway. Uh, we took it with 9,200 pounds on, on the eye gauntlet, the same test. Uh, so handling fine. Suspension works well. Mm -hmm. uh, does not have air suspension, by the way. No, just no, no air. Springs. Just regular springs, regular shocks, all this stuff. Um, I think they did a good job tuning the suspension. Mm -hmm. On the way down, um, it wasn't a super great performance. Okay. Um, eight brake applications on the way down, uh, which is not 10. No, uh, but it's also not one. One, <laughs> it's, right? Right. Um, so I think what was happening here is it has regen braking, right? Right. Or, or regen capability, and I think when we started on the way down the mountain, the battery uh, got full very fast. Right. It's a small battery, right? Yeah, one point five. Yeah. So it gained a lot of energy in, initially, and then it was up to the transmission and the engine, the V six that it has to actually slow us down. So it acted like a normal V6 twin turbo EcoBoost. Right. Because we've tested other EcoBoost Which is the 3.5, by the way, if you're curious, it's not the 2.7. Yeah. And this is, has massive power, 430 mm. horsepower and 570 pound-feet of torque. Which is a nutty amount of torque. That is crazy numbers. It's more than the Raptor. Yeah. It's more than any other half-ton truck, period. Which, by the way, we raced a Raptor versus this uh, hybrid and the results are very interesting. I highly uh, that, recommend. That's a drag race that's also coming very soon. Yeah, that's going to be on TFL truck. truck. Yeah. On TFL truck V. So I'm not going to tell you the but results. But we not. We can't give everything away. Right? No, 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 no. But it's it's worth watching. It's kind of interesting. We like the drag race. So so now the F-150 um, on the way down it didn't impress. Okay. Okay. It's okay. It's, it was fine. It's fine. Eight is fine. Yeah. On the way up, so. Obviously, we always use tow home mode, right? Right. So I'm. I'm. So by the way, Mr. Truck drove it on the way down, mm -hmm. and then we swapped. Uh, I jumped in the truck. I drove on the way up. So I have a little bit of more uh, knowledge on the, about the first hand knowledge here. Okay. And it accelerated to 60 off of the merge lane, right? Mm -hmm. As fast as the TRX did. No kidding. 
it was that quick. I mean, that was seat of the pants. I wasn't measuring it with like a GPS device. Well, that's got device. a lot of torque. And also you have that electric motor in there that helps mitigate any power loss. So you have instant torque from so that. So you got two turbos, you got an electric motor, so the elevation almost didn't matter. Right. In my, that's how I felt. Like, we are at high elevations, usually engines struggle, people struggle. You know, it's actually hard to actually walk and run at these elevations because, oh. because of the oxygen. That, Hell, just climbing in and out of a truck can win some people. Yeah, so, so it very impressed me very much on, with, with, with how it accelerated with 9,200 pounds. Then I also decided, I'm like, Okay, I'm at 60, what do I do now? So I set the cruise control, and like did, I did in the TRX. Right, and it didn't have a problem? And it had no problem, so it was about, a, I, I think I was in seventh gear. And that's towing 9,200 pounds? Yes. Yes, he said, I wouldn't normally, my personal thing is the Ikes I've done, I would never use cruise control towing that much because in many cases, we've tested this before, and it'll kick out of cruise control once the engine goes over, you know, has too much stress. That didn't happen, obviously. No, that didn't happen. Um, I, we had basically a perfect time on the way up because of this, mm -hmm. because it had no problem maintaining speed. Um, at one point, there was a little bit of traffic, so it slowed down for about one mile an hour, and of course, accelerated immediately mm -hmm. to 60 miles an hour. Uh, it was under eight minutes. It was like seven minutes and 49 seconds, don't quote me on this, but okay, well, that was Okay, watch the video and you'll know for sure. Yeah. So, and by the way, that, that had uh, the electronic cruise control system that actually is uh, radar guided, right? So in other words, you didn't have to touch the brake or anything. No, when no, no, traffic. it actually slowed down by itself, okay. yes. Which is another issue because we want to keep it as close with each truck as possible. Right. right. Anyway, it wasn't an issue this time. It's still hungry. Mm. So when it tows, uh, I think the final MPG was about 3.4. So that result was similar to the Titan. It was similar to some of the other trucks we've tested, right? Right. 3.4. Um, so once again, heavy load, up the mountain, no issues, but this engine is still hungry. Actually, the, um, the Titan got three miles per gallon and the Tundra got 3.4. So it's like the Tundra. Yeah, so it's right there with the Tundra, so, so even the, though it was towing 1,200 pounds more. Yeah, so, so this Ford is very impressive, uh, but if you expect it to be have like diesel level of fuel efficiency, you won't get a diesel level of fuel efficiency. True. But you will get incredible acceleration. And I want to talk about one of the main party tricks this truck has, which is just insane. And we've done some videos. I know they're already out there because I actually had to write them up. And that is what it can actually do when you're at a work site or a campsite or towing in terms of power because this thing is a rolling generator. Mm -hmm. Andre powered not one, but two large luxury trailers. Yes. Tommy charged an EV, a car, using it, and also ran a bunch of tools, including power tools. So both those videos are out there. Uh, one of them is on now and one of them is on truck. Am I correct, Andre? Actually, both of the charging videos are on TFL Now. Okay. Yeah, so you guys can check it out. TFL I Now highly channel on YouTube. Uh, and y yeah, dude, I, I, that's a very cool feature. There is no other way to say it because this truck, the one we're testing, had a 7.2 kilowatt inverter system. Right. Um, they're calling it Pro Power on board. That's the fourth term for it. But really, and sometimes they also refer to it as a generator, but there's not actually a second engine in no, the bed. No, it's, it's, what it's doing is it's powering itself when necessary. The, they modified the EcoBoost engine to work basically as a generator. So it provides power to the battery, which provides power to the outlets. And you can get a massive charge off of that truck, which is great. In fact, uh, I believe if you have a full tank of gas, you can get around what 700 mile range or you can power a site for over 30 hours yeah at maximum output at maximum output yeah. i should say yeah yeah so that's i mean that's incredible so that means you do not have to bring an external generator you still have all the bed space you want right right all the bed spaces there i so. mean the, and the area i mean there are all these different outlets in this one spot uh, it is about the coolest thing that's my favorite part of that truck is just what you can do with those outlets yeah, so 
So yeah, so kind of that's where you have it. Um, we are gonna have the Ike video fully published next week, right? Uh, for the F one fifty, and dude, so we t this was like the top ten, right? Mm -hmm. But dude, we we did like another twenty towing video at least. Yeah. So you and I did like a VW Atlas versus mm -hmm. Infiniti QX eighty. Uh, we've done um, several other trucks, other heavy duty trucks, other half size trucks, yeah, mid size trucks. So. If you want more information, obviously go back to tfltruck.com. And also the TFL Truck channel. Yep. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I really enjoyed going back over 2020. Let's all hope 2021 will not only be a better year for everybody else, but we'll get even more trucks to test so everybody can have a good time. I know we will because we have the Armada, the mm. Durango. We have a lot more to talk about soon. Also the GMC Sierra 1500 diesel in, has increased pay, uh, towing capacity. Fantastic. So, so we have test to test that. that too. Indeed we yeah. will. And there'll be some other vehicles that you might not be expecting that I'll get do the Ike as well. And that's coming up in the future, guys. So stay tuned. All right. As always, thank you. You can find us here everywhere podcasts are distributed mm -hmm. or also TFL Talk Absolutely. is where you will see the video of this podcast. Indeed you will. Thanks, guys. We appreciate your patronage. We'll see you next time.